Developing right now, a suspect is in custody following a deadly shooting. It happened late this morning in Pine Bluff, where police found 29 year old Otis Daniels with gunshot wounds. He was taken to Jefferson Regional Medical Center, where he later died. 44 year old John Carter was later taken into custody as an alleged suspect. Anyone with information regarding the homicide is asked to contact Pine Bluff Police. I'm really honored that people still remember him and still show love to Kevin because he gave the ultimate sacrifice. On the fourth anniversary of his murder, the Pine Bluff community gathered today to remember Detective Kevin Collins. It's not the first time they've done this, but as THV 11's Carter Thweet tells us, this one did feel a little different. That's right, Brooke. This is the first remembrance event since Keyshawn Smith was found guilty of Kevin's murder this past April. His mother tells me today it's bittersweet, but it does provide some much needed closure. He had a heart to serve. You always talked about how he wanted to serve from two years old. That was evident. It was evident in everything he did. That's Pine Bluff Mayor Shirley Washington, one of over 75 people gathered Saturday to remember Kevin Collins in a building that bears his name. Police Chief Denise Richardson says it's well deserved. Collins was everything to us. He knew how to present himself. When we teach officers how to wear their uniform, he is the example. When we teach officers how to talk to people in the community, he is the example. Everyone there had a story about Collins. A wonderful life tragically cut short when he was shot on October 5th, 2020. He was 35 years old. Kevin was a dynamite police officer, first class police officer. That's Collins' mother, Dornetta Hobbs. She was there in April when Keyshawn Smith was found guilty of his murder. Collins had been called to the scene to arrest Smith, who had a warrant out for his arrest in Georgia. Hobbs says the trial ultimately did give the family closure, but also created some mixed emotions. It's bittersweet. It's sweet in that we got some justice for him. It's sad in that I'm hoping that that young man gets a chance to change his life, to change his thoughts, and to give his life to Christ. But ultimately, this day wasn't about Colin's death, but his life, as Mayor Washington put so well. While the incident of his death will always impact our life, it is how he lived that we will remember most. And Hobbs tells me she's proud to keep Kevin's name alive. One way they've done so is with a scholarship named after Kevin for UAPB students studying criminal justice. And two of those scholarship recipients were there today. Heads up to drivers in Pulaski County. Right now, there are lane closures along I-30 as RDOT hits the final phase of the 30 crossing project. You can see the Arkansas River Bridge here where crews are working after closing some lanes last night. The good news is the project is almost done. However, starting today, drivers can expect their normal route to be delayed as RDOT begins shifting traffic. If you need to be downtown, especially if you're driving westbound, North Little Rock to Saline County, for example, find an alternative route if you can. If not, you're gonna to have to use that detour route which runs parallel to the interstate. It's a small inconvenience so we can get up there and finish the work on that bridge. RDOT says it's best for drivers to use the Broadway exit that runs parallel to Interstate 30, avoiding downtown. This is the first of three phases to get the river bridge fully opened. THV 11 is your election central and we're getting you ready to cast your ballot. Starting Monday, we're hearing from the candidates hoping to represent our state in Washington, D.C. You can watch Arkansas PBS congressional debates on THV 11 plus. It's our free streaming app available on Apple TV, Roku and Amazon Fire devices. With that app, you'll be able to watch the debates live and on demand when they wrap up. Things kick off in District 2 as incumbent French Hill faces his Democratic challenger, Marcus Jones. Cleanup following Helene is underway across several southern states where nearly 700,000 homes remain without power. As Christian Benavides reports, the storm's death toll continues to climb. It now stands at at least 225. 
More than a week after Hurricane Helene crashed ashore, the full extent of the damage is still coming into focus. In western North Carolina, Ben Phillips is shoveling a thick coat of mud and debris that's considered hazardous out of his home. It's heartbreaking to uh, everything we had in that house and, and all the memories we had with our kids. He lives in the town of Marshall, where the North Carolina flood map shows only a 1% chance of flooding. Out of more than 8,000 properties in the county, just 98 had flood insurance. In hard-hit Asheville, this group of volunteers drove five hours to serve a hot meal. We had people who are here in Asheville who have lost everything, and they're coming to help other people. With communications still spotty, North Carolina resident Sam Perking hiked 11 miles and up 2,200 feet of elevation through down trees, power lines, and mudslides to reach his parents, whom he hadn't heard from. They were completely trapped. The road was impassable from trees and washouts. The, the job he did and and uh, and making the effort to come up and 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 to see us. Oh. The ongoing cleanup stretches from Florida to as far north as Virginia. Helene is already the second deadliest storm to hit the U.S. mainland since Katrina 19 years ago. Cristian Benavides, CBS News.